<laughs> Hi. So, you may or may not have noticed that I've been gone for a good three and a half months. Yeah, that's what happens whenever you start a full-time job and suddenly creating, filming, editing, and uploading these extremely long projects gets to be a little bit on the tiring side. Now that I've gone back to working part-time at said job, I'm able to make some new stuff for you guys. And even though I've taken three and a half months off of sculpting stuff for this video, I'm not sculpting something for you guys. Instead, I wanted to try my hand at a craft that I used to make whenever I was a teenager then sort of forgot about and then retaught myself in the last couple weeks. Let's go! Also, just a warning, I am getting over a cold, so ignore my gross croaky voice. Okay, let's go. So for this project, you need two knitting needles. These are four millimeter needles. And then I have four different yarns I'm using. I have two mohair ones. There are these really light fuzzy sort of yarn. There's a dark green and a beige. And then I also have this DK white yarn. There's a lighter green and then this white color. I do show the process of knitting a little bit, but I don't want to give away the full pattern because it was a pattern that I purchased online. Um, I found it by this artist. She is very, very well known in the knitting world, it seems. Uh, her name is Claire Garland, and I'll link the pattern below. It's just called the Frog Pattern. You could find it on her Etsy page and also her Ravelry.com page. But we're putting the two yarns together because that's what she said to do and the mohair will make it very nice and fuzzy, which will be nice for a little stuffed animal and it'll be a little more um, interesting than just some regular old DK weight, regular yarn, very boring. So whenever it comes to knitting and purling, they're basically like the opposites of each other. So whenever you want to purl a stitch, you have your working needle and your right hand that goes into the front of the stitch on the left hand needle. And then we take the yarn from the front and wrap it around that needle and then down. And then you basically pull the stick through and hook that uh, rim of yarn that you did. And then you have a purl. Woo! So whenever it comes to knitting, it's very similar, except you go in from the bottom this time instead of the top. And then your needle will stay behind the left needle. You wrap the yarn around the right needle still and then pull it through like you would usually. So this pattern starts with the back or the butt of the frog and one side is going to be all of this chunky, really ugly looking knitted yarn and then the outside part that we're going to see whenever it's all complete is this nice purled side. It has this very flush V shape to it. It's less lumpy, it's less bumpy, it's more beautiful. We love her. So I just continue the knitting and purling of this pattern. Basically one row will be a knit and one row will be a purl. And then we have the top of the frog here that's shaping out a little bit. These are the bumps for the eyes. So one important thing that I learned while actually knitting one of these frogs, because I've knit about three of them now, is the important thing to remember whenever you're knitting is whatever side faces away from you, so is facing the same direction as your literal face. <laughs> whatever you're doing while working on that side is what's gonna show up. So if I'm purling, the side that's facing away from me will be the purled pattern. So that's why you go back and forth between knitting and purling. So one side will be all purled and then one side will be all knitted. Also, whenever it comes to changing the color of the yarn, it took me a couple tries to figure out the best way to do this because I used to just think that you would just cut the other yarn and then tie on the new color and then just like keep working. But apparently that is um, not the best way of doing things because it tends to unravel. So what I would just do is I knitted the first row because it was only the three stitches. Afterwards, I just tied the two tails together as tightly as I could. I don't know, I find that this works better for me than like tying it and then trying to knit with the already tied string, so this is what I do. Okay, now with the top and the bottom of this frog all done and knitted, I take the back marker and the belly marker that the pattern asks me to make and I just attach them together. This helps with uh, figuring out where you're going to be sewing everything because this frog isn't a nice clean seam, it's sort of bumpy and lumpy and weird. So I get to sewing him. You're supposed to start with the back and then sort of work your way to that marker that we tied together and then do the front and then sew the front parts together. So this is sort of what it looks like. Now I'm gonna be adding on the eyeballs. I just bought these on Amazon. They're your standard teddy bear black ball eyeball thingamajiggies. There's a bunch of different sizes. I just took the biggest one. 
and figuring out where to place these guys is actually kind of hard because you don't want it to look weird and wonky and you want them to be symmetrical. So I figured out a nice little spot where I thought that it looked fairly frog light and not very derpy. And then I put on the back washer, click clack patty whack. That was really satisfying to add on there. Next part, best part, absolute best part of the entire thing. I love making stuffed animals only for this reason is the stuffing. Oh my god, I love stuffing small creatures with clouds. It's so much fun. It's so satisfying to see their body um, regain its um, existence and life force. Yes, oh yes. So full, so fun, so squishy and fluffy. I love you. Get full of fluff. Yes, please. And then we can sew up the side after I stuff it full to the point of it exploding with fluffing. And we kind of lump and bump him, get his face placed the way we want. Make sure his eye hunches look like eye hunches and not flat blobs. Beautiful, beautiful. So, tie it all together. Excellent. All right, now that he's all sewn up and beautiful, we have to add his little mouth ridge thing. So the pattern asks you to pick up five stitches on either side of the mouth and then three stitches at the top of the beak, basically where the nose is. So what's that? 13 stitches in total. Whenever we're going back, you just cast off all of those little stitches and then we can tie off the extra string. And you can see he's got this little like lip thing. It's very super cute. Okay. Now onto the legs. So for the legs, you're supposed to leave a little space from its butt. It's not supposed to go past the back haunches. I picked up four stitches on this side and eye cords itself are pretty simple. If you had regular old knitting needles, you would move all of your stitches onto your left hand needle so that your working yarn is right there for you to grab. But since I have these double pointed needles, I can just slide the work over to the other side. And then the extra working yarn is this super long tail that wraps all the way around to the first stitch. So it's sort of like I'm stitching the last stitch and the first stitch beside each other, basically. That's how eye cord works. You can look up a proper tutorial if you actually need to know how to do it properly like I did because I didn't know how to do it. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna do that. And the important thing with eye cord is that first stitch you do because it's so, 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 so far away from its sister stitch. You really need to make sure that it is super tight and that the extra cord that's stretching across the back is it too stretched out. So it was a little bit challenging to do that, but still able to get it done, no problem. So I could just let you foolishly do eye cord like this. However, future me has a bigger brain than past me and future me has a message to tell you. And that message is to uh, put pipe cleaners into your stuffed animal before you start the limbs. This is something I did for another frog later on, and then whenever I went back to do the last arm on this one, I realized, oh, I should do this. So if you're gonna have limbs, like multiple limbs, like four limbs, for example, it's probably better to run a pipe cleaner through the spots you want before you start knitting. So for this frog, you would have the pipe cleaner go up for one leg into the body, and then you can just pull it back out where the other leg is, sort of like this, and then with the arms, you can do the same arm for arm because then the pipe cleaner is secured more so in the body, it's less likely to fall out, and it also just makes doing the eye cord a lot, lot easier because otherwise you have to stuff all of this pipe cleaner wire into the arms and it's just really awkward and weird and hard to do. So this is much easier. I recommend doing this, Future Me is very smart. The nice thing about this afterwards is you can just wrap the extra working yarn around the wire itself and you can do your eye cord that way and you can just sort of bend the wire out of the way as you need to, as long as it's always inside that working cord. Excellent, super smart. I uh, would really recommend that anybody who makes this frog do it this way. This was very smart, very good. And the way that I was doing it where it was just loose, not so fun, not so great, don't like it. But we continue the eye cord. The legs are very, very similar. They sort of get bigger at the shoulders and then hips, sort of bigger for the biceps and then the thigh part. They shrink a little bit around the knees and elbows, get bigger again for the forearms, and then they shrink around the ankles and wrists. Again, I'm not giving out all the details because if you want the pattern, you can just buy it. It was $3, very easy pattern to do. I could do it and I don't know how to do anything. So you can do it too, tee -hee. So for the hands, I like to loop the pipe cleaner wire into this sort of loopy loop makes it easier to attach the main finger to the loop afterwards and it also gives you a little bit of fake grip faux grip if you will for the hands whenever you actually get to the hands and feet they are very similar we stopped doing the eye cord and we go back to knitting a row purling a row and then for the hands and feet you do one finger at a time so you would let's say the finger is two stitches wide you would knit two stitches turn the work around 
purl two stitches, turn the work around again, and then we would knit the two stitches together so we have this one last loop that you can just cast off by running the extra string through the loop and then tightening it, and then you have a little froggy finger. All the hands were like this. I think the middle finger usually would be one stitch larger, so if you had two stitch outsides, the middle finger on the center would be three stitches, but it was basically all the same. So we did that many, many times for all of his little legs. And then after all of the fingers are done, you have this excess of loose yarn just sort of hanging out that you end up having to weave into all of the fingers. This was my least favorite, but also the most satisfying point because it was a pain to do because there's so many extra threads. I think there are like five to six threads per hand that you have to weave in individually around the pipe cleaner but it was also the most satisfying because whenever it was done, it was done and you could tell that it was a frog hand and it was very nice and satisfying. Another note from future me, don't use a white pipe cleaner unless the creature you're making has white fur. I used white for this because this is what I had, but then later on I started using green ones, which is much better because it hides inside the frog's arms a little more stealthily than white does. Unless you're really looking for a solid knit where you've filled up every single hole and you want it to be really structurally sound. I don't really care for that. It's just a frog. It's going to sit on a shelf somewhere in my house, probably wear a sweater or something. So having all of the white pipe cleaner actually hide away and not be seen was more of a pain than anything else. So that's another note that future me would give to pass me, who is now Mimi, and in the future I will use green if I'm making a green frog. Woot! After you have completed all four limbs, we can get on to the final froggy reveal. And here's our finished little froggy. He's got poseable arms, albeit a little bit low on his torso, but it's fine. We'll just go with it. He's got some nice little limbs. He's going to be wearing a nice little sweater later on. We love him. He's very cute. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I'll see you again for the next one. Bye!